Hello everyone, I am Jaime Góngora. I work at the University of Sydney. I want to share some of my capacity building and citizen science work that I do with former guerrilla fighters in Colombia. Before I start my talk, I would like to acknowledge and pay my respects to the traditional owners of the land where I am at the moment the Cadigal people of the Yora Nation. During my talk, I would like to showcase how citizen science and biodiversity could be a pathway for inclusive science, socioeconomic development of remote communities and peace in Colombia. First, I would like to share some Colombian context where this project takes place. As you may know, Colombia is one of the most biodiverse countries on earth. Biodiversity has paradoxically been protected by the conflict in the last 55 years. However, since the peace agreement in 2016, biodiversity loss, deforestation in post-conflict areas has increased in an alarming scale. Due to the extensive cattle ranching and agricultural frontier and illegal activities. In terms of the sociopolitical context, the last 55 years of the Colombian conflict has left a large number of deaths and victims impacted by the violence and the conflict, in particular those people who live under the poverty lines. As you could see in this slide, there have been a lot of deaths and victims in this process. In 2016, the peace agreement between one of the largest guerrillas, Far EP, has brought new hopes and opened natural areas to be accessible to the public, including researchers. And as a consequence of this, a good number of scientific bio expeditions since the peace agreement has taken place. However, none of them has included as combatants or former guerrilla fighters. In terms of the characteristic of my stakeholders or the stakeholders of this project, the skills and interests of the former guerrilla provides an opportunity for engagement in protecting and documenting biodiversity. As you could see from this slide, a high percent of them are interested in forest conservation, have agricultural skills, and has aspiration to work with the environment and for the environment. When Peace with Nature was created or established, we collaborated with more than 10 institutions in Colombia and we were part of the bigger project called Grow Colombia. While Grow Colombia was focusing on the big picture with scientific institutions and researchers, Peace with Nature was focusing on its combatants as part of the post-conflict period. And in this process, we engaged with the stakeholders in the regions and the national level and international collaborators. Our approach in Peace with Nature consists in a capacity building program in a range of biodiversity, conservation and ecotourism topics so former guerrilla members can enhance their capacity to document and protect biodiversity as well as implement feasible ecotourism initiatives. I want to showcase one of our workshops which usually have a duration of a week in a blog session. It was delivered in Charras, that is a location in southern Colombia, at the intersection of the Orinoco savannas and the Amazon forest. During the workshop at the locality of Charras, we had a diverse participation, not only because they reached Colombian diversity or ethnicity, but also in terms of gender. In addition, we have two members of the Colombian military forces and police as participants. They were working with the combatants plus 17 members of the military forces and police providing protection because of the security risk. One of the key aspects that made our workshops very engaging and interesting was the participatory methodology that we used. We co-designed this with the combatants and other stakeholders. We dance, we discuss, we reflect, we play. We have the opportunity to express our ideas. The methodologies allow people to think and to consider that they were in a safe environment to express their opinions and ideas. 
During the first sessions, we were working with these combatants in activities to reflect about their knowledge on biodiversity, what they learned, how they implemented conservation initiatives of activities while they were in the jungle or in the forest before the peace agreements. We talk as well and discuss about their ecotourism projects, what aspirations they have, what their plans were, and where they were heading with our plans, and what was the role of biodiversity, and how to sustain to a sustainable use of ecosystems and biodiversity, so their ecotourism project will be sustainable in the long way as well. During day two and three, we learned a lot about uh, how to use equipment for uh, documenting biodiversity, like binoculars, spotting scopes, camera straps, uh, and other equipment, and also application like iNaturalist, and uh, how to obtain the sample, how to pack the samples, and all this information allow them to do the implementation of the inventories of biodiversity. As I mentioned, we learned about uh, citizen science in different, about different aspects of the use of iNaturalist. In Colombia, the name of this one is Naturalista, and also how to set and manage projects, or how to engage the public, and how to use this for ecotourism. In addition to this, we set and identify an ecological route that will be used for the ecotourism activity, and we decide to do the inventories of the biodiversity in these areas. We divide the participants in small groups, and they went to do the inventories of biodiversity, as I am going to explain in, in the subsequent slides, uh, using all the knowledge that they, they learned in previous days with the experts and collaborators and trainers in those workshops. So one group went and uh, sampled different plants, as, as many as possible, and they packed and sent the sample for classification in, in some research institutes in Colombia, and also they took pictures and tried to, 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 to keep records of that information. Another group went and did the, the documentation of vertebrates, as many was possible, as you know, any noise that you may, any noise that you may in the jungle, in the forest, the animals run away, and sometimes they just they, they smell that humans are around and they are not present. Nevertheless, we were able to document a good number of vertebrates. Another group went and do the spotting of birds, that we have a lot of birds and the biodiversity there was good. So a, a, a spotting birds is some kind of a, a activity that tourists like to do. So we identify a good numbers of these ones. Another group went and worked with the insects, the biodiversity of insects is amazing there. So we have the chance to identify small animals and some ones that were big, nearly bigger as the hand uh, of humans. Another group was collecting information on fish and pink, dol uh, pink dolphins. We rely on indigenous and locals that were fishing at the time and they shared with us their local knowledge on the fish present in the river that was near the, the, uh, the, ch the, ch the Charra locality. As a result of the workshops, uh, we established a, an iNaturalist project for uh, the ecological route that was established for the ecotourism initiative. We document the biodiversity that we, was there in Charras, and we upload that into this project in iNaturalist, and everyone can have access to this documentation, and people also can participate in, in helping in classifying some of the species. In addition to the iNaturalist, also we generate a biodiversity booklet for Charles. We took all the pictures and the classification that has been done by experts in collaboration with these combatants and put the booklet there together. And this booklet now is informing the ecological route or the ecotourism routes, but al and also helping these combatants to serve as guides of those ecotourism routes. In addition to all of this, these combatants and participants and other participants, they have the opportunity to learn about business plans and economics of ecotourism and about how to embed or incorporate biodiversity aspects into ecotourism and also conservation aspects into ecotourism. 
with this, we want to help them with the feasibility of the ecotourism initiatives that they are planning as part of the reincorporation process. There is an additional aspect that is not visible, but I feel very proud about Peace Week Nature, not only because the biodiversity uh, and uh, outcomes and the community development outcomes, but also because it went beyond the, its purpose and it helps to build trust, reconciliation, and uh, better understanding amongst former actors of the armed conflict in Colombia. Let me explain a couple of the pictures that I have here. In this picture that I am pointing out, and you, here uh, there is an combatant that is, is teaching uh, children from uh, local schools and also a member of the police how to use iNaturalis to document biodiversity. We have here members of the former guerrilla and members of the military forces discussing about biodiversity. And here we have indigenous people sharing with the audience their knowledge about biodiversity. So you could see that Peace with Nature has gone beyond the biodiversity outcomes and outputs. We also have the graduation, which was and has been a very significant event at the end of the workshops. People feel very proud of the certificate, and for some of them, it's the first time that they have a certificate for an activity that they have done. In relation to our media and public engagement, we believe that it has helped to change perceptions amongst the public about the positive role of its combatants to protect biodiversity, and among researchers about the role of science to address socioeconomic issues in remote areas of Colombia. One of the highlights of our media engagement has been the publications of news about our work in the top ranking and prestigious magazine Science. One of the major outcomes of our project is that these combatants have enhanced their skills and knowledge on biodiversity to become citizen scientists, biomonitors, and environmentalists to protect biodiversity and also to explore a sustainable use of ecosystem services. We were fortunate to deliver most of the initiative before the COVID-19 pandemic started. We will move some future workshops online with some components offline and also some face-to-face -face with the activities with the assistance of people in Colombia. In terms of the evaluation by its combatants, these were very positive, 95% rated the Peace Wing Nature program on the highest scales for content, organization, methodology. In addition, the comments were very positive. They appreciated a lot what we did and how we engaged them. In terms of the challenges and opportunities, uh, I would say that one of the major challenges were the security risk, but we have the support of the United Nations and the members of the police and military forces. Uh, the other challenge was that we were working in remote areas where we have limited resources and the communi communication facilities are limited as well. But in general, we count on the passion, commitment and enthusiasm of the participants, trainers, to protect biodiversity and to live it in peace in Colombia is what people want. In summary, we consider that our program provides evidence that the production of knowledge based on the dynamic interaction between science and society can contribute to address both social and environmental conservation problems and could become a blueprint for future programs working in our conflict areas. Thank you to the many people that contribute to this project and to the support of different organizations and the funding bodies. Thank you very much for your attention. This slide shows some of the houses where these combatants live in the settlements in remote areas of Colombia. If you have any question, please feel free to contact me or send me an email. Thank you very much again. And if you are interested uh, or want more details about our program, please have a look at this video. You will find that information there.